It's time to sharpen my pruning shears. So it's summer and the garden is growing like crazy, which means stuff needs cutting back. Unfortunately, someone has been using these pruning shears to clip through wire fencing. So the edge is seriously chewed up. So they definitely need a sharpen. Sharp pruning shears take a lot less effort to cut things and they also leave a much cleaner cut which is better for the plant to heal over. For these pruning shears, I have chosen to sharpen them with the DMT Dia Sharp Mini Hones. There are three main reasons why I've picked these. First off is because the edge is so dinged up, diamonds are great at cutting through steel. So the coarse Mini Hone will make short work of repairing that damage. The second reason is that they come in a set, so I can go from coarse fine to extra fine, have a nice edge for those easy and clean cuts. Third, and perhaps most importantly, is I've picked these because they're relatively thin, and so they'll let me sharpen these shears without having to take them apart. They're not particularly difficult to take apart, but it's one extra step, and making maintenance as easy as possible means I'm more likely to do it. The fastest way to put an edge back on these will be to match the angle that they were originally sharpened at. So I'm just going to look down the blade and then do a little sweep and then have a look at the scratches that the hone leaves behind. Another way to match the angle is to color this in with Sharpie or some sort of permanent marker and then see what marker gets removed. I've got quite a lot of work to do with this, so let's get to it. So as I'm sharpening, I'm gonna be removing metal, but another thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be pushing some of the metal from this side over to the other side. So metal has certain kind of plastic qualities. You can bend it and it will stay bent. And so some of the metal that I'm pushing off of this edge is gonna bend over to the other side. And once I can feel that on the other side, what I can feel is known as a burr. If I can feel that, then I know that I've done a good job of sharpening this side and I can switch to the other side. But I'm not there yet. I can feel a bit of a burr still down in the bottom. I don't have a burr raised yet. So I've got a burr, still got some dings to work out. So I might need to go back and forth a couple of times. When I flip this over to get the other side, I'm just trying to remove this wire edge that I've pushed over. So I'm just gonna lay this flat. Looks like the tip has been damaged as well. All of these have been through the wars. So I get why these were used to cut wire because you're out in the garden and you've got a bit of fencing that needs to be done and these are out there with you. The nice thing about knowing how to maintain your tools is that you can kind of do stupid stuff with them if you've got the skills to repair that damage. So having a nice little sharpening kit like this means that if once in a while you cut something with these that you maybe shouldn't, you at least know that you can put an edge back on them. But still having the right tool for the job is uh, definitely recommended. So this coarse file is gonna do most of the work repairing the damage. You don't wanna change grit too soon because those finer grits, while they'll put a nice edge on, they'll cut a lot slower. And so while you're still repairing damage, stick to the coarse grits. Okay, so I can still feel that it's a bit of a ragged edge. Nice thing about these little files is you can stick them in your pocket while you're out and using your pruners. So you can give them a quick touch up when they need it rather than letting them get really blunt. What's that saying? That an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So I think we're giving our pound of cure right now. OK, 
Okay, so the edge is feeling a lot less ragged now. Still a little bit near the tip. So there's still a bit of a ding in the edge there, but it feels like I've taken most of the notches out throughout the rest of the blade. So I'm not gonna worry about little, that little one. So I'm just gonna move on now from the coarse to the fine. Now that I've done all the major grinding, all I really wanna do is smooth out those rough scratches left behind by the coarse diamond abrasive. So like I mentioned earlier, a burr is kind of a thin wire edge that's getting pushed from one side to the other. With certain tools, if you've got something like a high carbon steel uh, kitchen knife, for example, they tend to be quite hard. That wire edge is more likely to snap off as you push it backwards and forwards. For a tool like this, which needs to be tough, so hardness tends to correlate with brittleness, whereas toughness and softness kind of go hand in hand. It can be a little harder to get rid of that burr. You need to push it back and forth quite a lot in order to remove it. So be prepared to take the time to do that. If you don't properly remove the burr, it can tear off and then the surface under the burr is blunter than had you properly deburred it. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Got quite a smooth edge to it. We've removed those deeper scratches left by the coarse grit. I think for this kind of tool, I could probably stop on the fine, but got an extra fine, so might as well. Once again, this extra fine is here just to remove those slightly deeper scratches left behind from the fine stone. So this shouldn't take too long. Typically, the finer the grit that you're using, the less force you want to push down on the edge with it. We're no longer trying to remove a lot of material, we're just trying to get those scratches removed. So with that coarse hone, I was pushing down relatively hard, but with this extra fine, not using a lot of force. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's see what it's like now. So here we can see the cut that I made while the shears were still blunt and it's kind of crushed the wood fibers rather than cut through them. So let's make a new cut and see if that makes any difference. Okay, that looks like a much cleaner cut to me. We've certainly got less crushing going on. So I'll leave a link in the description below to the mini hone sharpening kit. If you're interested in other possible options for sharpening pruning shears, then you can watch this video where we look at three different ways to sharpen secateurs or pruning shears. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. And if you enjoy watching sharpening videos, then consider subscribing.